folks up from Atlanta. A lot of Braves fans on hand and just baseball fans in general here to see Chipper Jones play his final three regular season games. As a former Hall of Famer, Willie Stargell, the statue. As the Pirates open up the final series of the season while the Braves will be moving on to the playoffs. Chipper Jones honored before the game and he will be moving on at the age of 40. And how appropriate it is that he'll be going to the postseason for the 12th time in some 18 big league seasons. Just an amazing, no doubter, Hall of Famer. Absolutely. Case closed. Chipper Jones, Cooperstown. Commemorative bases for the series. He was uh, given one of those a few moments ago in the pregame ceremony. The Braves, 93 wins, 66 losses under Freddie Gonzalez, his second year. Michael Bourne, Martin Prado, Jason Hayward, 1, 2, 3, Chipper Jones, 2,725 hits, fifth all-time among switch hitters in Major League Baseball history. Freddie Freeman follows, and Reed Johnson in left field. Brian McCann will catch. Andrelton Simmons is the shortstop, and Paul Mahalam on the mound. And they will be lined up against left-hander Jeff Locke. This number is brought to you by the Western PA Chevy dealers. They can start number six. There have been bits and pieces where you like what you see, but he's got to really string something uh, deeper into a ball game. Uh, had five strikeouts and just one walk last time out, but just three and two thirds innings, five earned runs given up against the New York Mets. They like him, but I think, uh, to be quite honest, the Pirates have to see more. But they list him as a candidate for the rotation next year. We were talking earlier before the open. Uh, this guy, he looks like a ball player still at age 40. Uh, he, he looks like a ball player. He carries himself like a major leaguer. Uh, what a great career. Great all around career. Been the face of this organization for all those 20 years. Jeff Locke facing Michael Bourne. Underway with a strike right there. Michael Bourne with all the speed, 40 steals. Jeff Locke. Looking to win his first major league game. Priority number one, keep Bourne off the base paths. Native of New Hampshire. And a strike. Jeff Locke, second round pick of the Atlanta Braves six years ago. Has never faced his former organization's major league team. He has worked 28 innings, 28 strikeouts. That's the good news. Bad news 0 and 3, 635 ERA. And a good start. Hasn't needed his defense yet, other than his battery mate. But Andrew McCutcheon is in center field tonight with Sterling Marte in left and Jose Tabata in right. Pedro Alvarez, Clint Barmas on the left side. Chase Darno, his first start for the Pirates this season at second base. Debbie Sanchez at first. Michael McHenry, the catcher. So Chase Darno, a chance to start for the first time this season. And Michael McHenry. Behind the plate. There's Martin Prado. Well, priority one for a young starter trying to impress, throw a lot of strikes. So far, so good. Michael Bourne, no stranger to strikeouts. That's his 152nd strikeout of the year. Another one in the zone for Jeff. Prado was scheduled to be in left field, but a little over an hour ago. He was moved from left to second and they inserted Reed Johnson into the lineup. Dan Ugla scratched for precautionary reasons. Swelling in his right hand is what they told us. Ball popped up. Shallow right. Two outs. Jeff Locke with the long locks will face Jason Hayward. Now lefties uh, early on this season been having a lot of trouble with them. 346 batting average against Jeff Locke, left handed batters, 9 out of 26. A triple A this year for Indy. They hit just 197. 
Well, if he's going to pitch at this level, he's going to have to move the ball around. And I would uh, suggest perhaps that a lot of that average is trying to hit that outside corner. He's got to keep them honest too. keep those lefties away from where you want to get a lot of outs. Left handers love to get outs against left hand batters away. But in order to do that, you got to move off the plate every once in a while. Oh, and one on Hayward. And that was in on him. Locke can't make the play. Alvarez to first. And yes, the big stretch. They got him. Nice play. One, two, three for Jeff Locke. Paul Mahalam, the former pirate, will oppose his former mates. to play. And this is his lineup brought to you by Toyota. Starling Marte will be followed by Chase Darno and Andrew McCutcheon with great speed there at the top. Gabby Sanchez hits cleanup. Michael McHenry bats in the fifth spot of the order. Pedro Alvarez hitting sixth. And it's Jose Tabata, Lynn Barmas, and Jeff Locke. The only thing different about Paul Mahalam, well, other than the uniform, is the number. He used to wear 28, he wears number 17. Taken by Greg Walker, the hitting coach. Usually don't bump the coaches out of their uniform numbers. Paul hasn't. He's ready to work. And Jeff Locke making his sixth major league start. Paul Mahala making his 216th. 66 major league wins, 13 of them coming this year. So 53 and 73 with Pittsburgh. Marte. The appeal said he didn't offer at it. Mahalam was a former first round pick of the Pirates out of Mississippi State in 2003. He was the eighth overall choice that season. 436 career ERA and 185 starts with Pittsburgh. One and two on Marte. Certainly got hot at the right time from the end of June till the end of July near the trading deadline. Paul Mahalam was lights out. Six starts with an ERA of an even one for the Cubs. Braves defensively. Reed Johnson, we mentioned he was a late addition to the lineup. He's been a pirate killer over the years, by the way. Michael Bourne and Jason Hayward, the other outfielders. Freddie Freeman at first, Martin Prado at second. First stop Simmons, left at the third base, it's Jones, and McCann and Mahalam the battery. Pretty standard to see that guy at third base for a couple decades. The cornerstone at the corner. Pretty neat, really, when you think about it. You look at a guy like this winding down his career, and I think it was Paul Meyer, the former uh, 
beat writer for the Pirates, the Post Gazette, who I don't believe at, at the time, I'm not sure had a Hall of Fame vote. Maybe he did, but he, one of his cohorts said that he never looked at the statistics when the King still does have a Hall of Fame ballot mm -hmm. every year. Doesn't yeah. go over the stats, he just looks at the name. And when it says Hall of Fame in his mind, this guy's a Hall of Famer. And that's what Chipper Jones is. You look at him, it's a Hall of Famer. Right. You and don't have to look at his stats. Right. And he's never been noisy. Yeah. He's never a lot of verbal. Uh, lead by example if you look in that direction. So you watch him go about his craft and you are a member of the Atlanta Braves. If you watch him keep your eyes open mouth shut. You're going to learn a lot. Well, what, what a matchup it was with Bobby Cox and yeah. Chipper Jones. Now you talk about Hall of Famers That's a fit done deal. But boy, what professionalism at uh, both ends. Freddie Gonzalez has done a nice job. What a difference a year makes, too, by the way. The September collapse, the greatest collapse in baseball history in the month of September for the Braves last year. Strike three call. A swinging strikeout and one looking for Mahalam. You're looking inside. Look at McCann. He's right there. When you hit the glove, you got a chance to get the call. And that's exactly what happened. Paul will not rack up a bunch of strikeouts. We know that, but he'll get them. And he's hitting his spots. Last time out against Miami, very effective. Six and two thirds scoreless innings, no walk, six strikeouts. McCutcheon, who's a uh, chances now of overtaking Buster Posey, extremely remote. He's eight points back, 329. Posey hitting 337. Still, when all is said and done, it will be a great year. 107 runs leads the league currently. 192 hits, the league leader. Second and on base, second and slugging. Drift out of play. Two and one on McCutcheon. It was interesting to hear Neil Huntington on his radio show talking about McCutcheon's season, and they have the. Uh, Exit interviews they do with each player. Hurdle and Neil Huntington interviewing essentially each player to talk about what the year was like and looking ahead to 2013. And all McCutcheon wanted to talk about was not himself specifically, but how he and the team can finish that thing next year, really do it. And he wants to improve his game, no question. And he made a great huge step forward this season compared to last year as he takes ball four. Yeah, you know when the dust settles from this year and and subsequent years you don't look when you look back at a year you don't look at sections so much as you look at an overall year because uh, you know there are ups and downs peaks and valleys and you're going to look at this guy having one heck of a year. You know, it, good years get chopped up all over the place so do bad years. Gabby Sanchez. Nothing in one on the first baseman. 48 games with Pittsburgh, a 250 average. Four of his seven homers in a Pirates uniform. Paul has given up 19 on this season between the Cubs and the Braves. Born kind of started in, but easily gets back. He's excellent out there in center. Walk doesn't hurt Mahalam. Nothing, nothing.
under the second. A familiar face there, Jack Wilson, who announced he was retiring last week. His whole stand is Chipper Jones. It's the standing O from everybody as he's announced. Yep, he should. He's had to do that a lot this year, and I'm sure he doesn't mind it. Yeah. Although he loves to get back in the box, doesn't he? Yeah, he, he, he's at work. Acknowledges now. Yeah. everybody. Yeah. He'd rather be doing what he's doing yeah. right now. Uh, his farewell tour around the country this season. On as each pitch is delivered, flashes from cameras and cell phones. He's been a, a great major leaguer. Line right at third. You know, when you bring up that phrase, there's a difference between a ball player and a major leaguer. He's a major leaguer. Lines out to third. And now Jeff Locke will face Freddie Freeman. The Pirates will put a shift on. I wonder if Jeff uh, feels good about just getting the future, future Hall of Famer out. He's probably feeling good about getting people out in yeah. general. Sure, it's a, from in more ways than one, a special start for Jeff Locke. He's still looking for that win, and he's making his final start this season against the team that drafted him. Mm. Pirates acquired Jeff Locke three years ago, along with Charlie Morton and Gorky Hernandez. Hernandez was traded to the Marlins in the Gabby Sanchez deal. Morton out with Tommy John surgery. Pirates sent Nate McLeod to Atlanta in that deal. Nate, Nate McLeod doing a pretty good job for the Orioles he these is. days. Yep. Hitting the ball over the fence. Two and one on Freeman. Freeman finished second to Craig Kimbrell and Rookie of the Year voting last year. The Braves have been successful for so many years because they have drafted well. In this case, Freeman, second rounder five years ago. And yet they do uh, supplement their roster seemingly every year with key free agent signings. But really, it all starts with how these guys have, this organization has drafted players. Sure, holds and. Yep. Uh, Stan Caston when he's Frank Rand now yep. and ball four on Freeman. You know you, you brought up an incredible stat when you when you when you sort it all out and, and get an overview of Chipper Jones. Twenty years in the big leagues, twelve seasons in post postseason, twelve years in postseason. That run they had when they were winning the division, you know, uh, you got to factor in a lot of Chipper Jones in those uh, division wins. Find a way to finish a career in the postseason. And they're still not eliminated just yet from the National League East. The magic number for the Nationals to clinch is one. So any Pirate victory, this uh, three game series, or Washington Nationals win. And tonight they host the Phillies, and scoreless in the second. And that would eliminate the Braves from postseason. From, I'm sorry, from. The division title, they'll go to the postseason anyway. Right now, they would uh, host St. Louis in the one game wild card playoff. Mentioned uh, what a difference a year makes. Braves, a season after blowing a comfortable wild card lead with a 9 and 19 September, finished this September 19 and 8. Ball and two strikes. And it jumped over everybody. Now they're finishing this season strong. Last eight games, 
Their pitching staff, 7 and 1, 125 ERA. And they haven't scored a bunch of runs, enough to win. At the eight game stretch, batting 222 with the 32 runs scored. Last 26 games, the pitching staff 19 and 7, a 229 ERA. Two and two. Jeff Locke, who got the call up last September and in four starts was 0 and 3 with a 6.48 ERA. Spent the bulk of this year Triple A Indy. 10 and 5, 248 earned run average for the Indians. And now 3 and 2 on Reed Johnson. After starting this game with a whole bunch of strikes, now he's uh, extending at bats. Never something you want to do. His last start was against the Mets. He got off to a good start. A couple of scoreless innings. Then things got away from him in the third. Three and two on Reed Johnson. And acquired with Paul Mahalam from the Cubs before the deadline for pitcher Jay Chapman and another minor league pitcher. And now it's first and second for Brian McCann. AGH Sports Medicine injury update Dan Ugla this season. Just a 219 average, but still has some decent power numbers 19 homers, 77 RBIs, and scratched. As a precautionary measure. Swelling in the right hand. Now two on one out. All star catcher Brian McCann. Michael McHenry out to talk with Locke. To throw strikes. The phrase: If you want him to remember your name, you got to throw strikes. Got to get outs. Threw a bunch of those in the minors this season. 142 innings, 43 walks, 131 strikeouts at Indy. He has allowed six home runs in just over 28 innings. Jeff Locke. In the minors, he gave up nine dingers in 142 innings. McCann has hit 20 this season. One and two. Take another look. Right on that outside corner, down and away. You can throw it with a curveball and get it there, or fastball. Equally impressive. Freeman and Johnson, the runners, McCann at the plate, and it's two and two. Since the start of the 06 season, Brian McCann leads the big leagues among catchers in home runs, 151 since the start of the 2006 campaign. Remember all those years he was fooling around with contact lenses yeah, and all that? Finally got that straight. That was a problem, problem for him, yeah. Bounced right side. Nice backhand play, Sanchez. There's one, and McCann has not run well at all. So Locke had all night to get to first for the inning ending double play. 
from the bottom of the second, nothing, nothing. There is Larry Jones and his wife, Chipper's parents. They were just as classy as their son. Saying thank you. Rivers Casino tips to win. Well, we, you know the theme tonight. It's okay to keep up with the Joneses. And if Atlanta, Atlanta does get ahead, well, you can just chip away at it. Yep. Chipper himself wrote a neat piece. Uh, in Sports Illustrated a couple of weeks ago about his final campaign. Really neat stuff about including his dad who taught him the game. Grew up in Vero Beach. The Dodgers used to train there. Mickey Mantle was Larry Jones's hero. Chipper's father loved Mickey Mantle and as a young player Chipper Jones once did a baseball card show with Mickey Mantle. Not long before Cancer took Mantle's life. And according to Chipper, as he said in this piece at Sports Illustrated, that uh, Mickey Mantle was a god to him because he batted switch. And mm -hmm. as he said, I wanted to bat switch because he spent his whole career with one club. I wanted to spend my whole career with one club. Ball drilled foul by McHenry. And because he played hard and played hurt. I wanted to play hard and play hurt. And because he found time to play golf and to fish and hunt and hang out with his friends, I wanted to do all that too. I imagine uh, Mickey would be pretty proud of that. Oh, I think he'd enjoy hanging out with Chipper yeah. and vice versa. Yeah. Who wouldn't enjoy hanging out with Mickey Man? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, Whitey and Billy did. Whitey Ford, Billy mm -hmm. Martin. Hang out with Mickey Mantle. <laughs> Forget about it. I think you'd enjoy his personality a little more than Joe DiMaggio's. Although, it would be pretty, pretty cool to hang out with Joe D yeah. also. <laughs> Marilyn seemed to enjoy it. For a time. Hollum goes inside and misses. Well, you got to believe that Bobby Cox is watching every one of these games and uh, watching with a lot of pride. Ball four for Hollum. Walks McHenry to start the second and the second walk allowed by the Braves starter.
Barrel Automotive League leaders since 1990. Lowest ERAs after the All-Star break. A 2.89 ERA for these Atlanta Braves. The Expos ERA after the break. A tad higher. Roger McDowell likes what he sees from his pitching staff. That's how you run the table. You don't give the other team many runs. Yep. That's the first commandment. Now you talk about somebody would be fun to hang out with Roger McDowell. He is an interesting personality. Yeah. Good guy. 2 0. One of the few guys in Major League Baseball that uh, appeared on a Major League field in a Mets uniform upside down. The oh, uniform right. going the yep. other way. That's right. That's not easy. Nope. Pretty clever idea, wasn't it? <laughs> it was hilarious. Well, now, well, I'm getting a bit frustrated here as he falls behind Alvarez 3 0. 50 walks, 132 Ks for Mahalam this season. No free passes that last start against the Marlins. Just one start before that. Team grab at the baseball. It's trademark frustration when you're not throwing strikes, among other actions. 30 years old, Paul Mahalam. Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Three and two. No strangers. Alvarez and Mahalan. Top of the strike zone. Underneath it. All the way back. All the way back for Paul. Strikeout number three. From three and zero to three and two, and then what could have been ball four, which would have been ball four, but Odo took a whack at and came up empty. From three and zero to three and three. And here's Tabata. Tabata yesterday called upon to pinch hit in the ninth inning. No, don't don't relive that. <laughs> well, in case you missed it. <laughs> I know. I know you have to. Pirates down oh. a run. He walked against Aroldis Chapman on four pitches, and then Chapman tried to pick him off. The ball went into foul territory. Kicked off the fence in front of the box seats, and you do credit the second baseman Valdez for getting out there in a hurry. But for whatever reason, Tabata, to me anyway, Steve, didn't look like, and again, for whatever reason, uh, not to make excuses, but perhaps the wet grounds and didn't get a third. really wide turn at second base. And he does look over his shoulder initially, and now he picks up Leva, Nick Leva. Look at the wide turn there, and I don't know if that's the reason, but uh, bottom line is, Bad way to to start that ninth inning. Look at that little play there, almost a double play. Slip from the second baseman Prado on to Simmons. Simmons almost pulled it off. That was great work at second base because he had a runner bearing down on him. And it was a bad throw from the second baseman. He has to give some ground and then the low throw. Awkward uh, position for the shortstop to be in. Henry doing what he needed to do. It's tough as a shortstop when you have to wait there and you know the guy's bearing down on you. Day automotive key matchup of the day. This one certainly favors Barmas. His career 432 average against Paul Mahalam, who's a career here in this ballpark. Pretty darn good. 
You have to keep in mind those numbers. 36 and 31 and 98 starts here. Uh, 376 ERA. For some clubs that weren't real good. And a base hit it continues for Barnes. So first and second two outs brings up the pitcher Jeff Locke. Barmas, the base hit. Showed you the numbers. Figured Barmas would feel comfortable in there against Paul Mahalam. Those career numbers. And now Locke, one for nine at the plate. Strikes on lock. Well, Mahalam, a durable pitcher over the years with the Pirates. Say what you will about whether he lived up to his uh, potential. Uh, Last year, middle of August, placed on the disabled list, first time in his career, time on the DL. But uh, and, and that good work, and it, it was dependable, and that's a good quality, yep. but it still has to result in wins. Something maybe he was uh, miscast as a top of the rotation guy. Uh, strikeout for Mahalo. Number four. Nothing, nothing after two. Pirates Baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by Chevrolet and their award-winning cars, trucks, and crossovers. By your Toyota dealers. Life is all about the ride. See your Western Pennsylvania Toyota dealers today for a great car with a great deal. And by Day Automotive. We're going to make your day. Let's go Bucks. Nothing, nothing as we move along to the third inning here. The final three games of the season for Pittsburgh. Jeff Locke against Paul Mahalam. Eighth man in the order. Anderson Simmons will lead things off. And Mahalam and back to the top, Michael Bourne. Cool night in the Berg. Thankfully, uh, this game started on time. Dreary forecast, yeah. but so far so good. That long delay yesterday. Four minutes. 
probably get the field back in shape very promptly. Second round pick two years ago. Andrelton Simmons. I have never seen him, but watching him try to work that pivot at second base awkwardly. Had the indication he's a pretty good athlete. Looked like a gymnast. Native of Curacao. Went to Western Oklahoma State Junior College. Drafted in the second round two years ago. Six to 170 pounds. Last month turned 23 years old. Spent some time on the DL this year. Broke his uh, right pinky finger. And a head first slide. See the low throw. That's never easy. When you're waiting for a guy to slide and take you out as completely as he can. Athleticism. Or gymnast. Playing 300. He was at uh, Double A Mississippi this season. Committed just four errors and 235 chances there. Double A affiliate. And a fly ball hit deep to left. Right there. Is Starling Marte with no room to spare. Follow the Pirates with the MLB.com at bat 12 app for your iPhone, iPad, Android, Blackberry, and Windows Mobile. Get live audio, pitch tracking, video highlights, and more. Text at bat to 31826 or visit pirates.com for details. Interesting. We're seeing the Atlanta Braves at kind of the end of September, early October. The only other time we saw them, the end of April, a long time in between. Good fastball by Jeff Locke. Mahalam in his second career home run this season, June 23rd, while he was with the Cubs against Ian Kennedy of the Diamondbacks. Kennedy, right hand pitcher. Yeah. Yeah. That explains it. A lot of good hitting pitchers don't want anything to do with the guy throwing from the same side. Strikeout number two. So good. Uh, so far, so good for Jeff with the help of the double play after a couple of walks in the second inning. We're talking earlier about him having a couple. Of no, it's also decent starts. He went six innings against the Cubs back on the 9th of September, giving up just a couple runs. Pirates didn't do much to help him offensively, but gave up a couple of solo homers here at PNC Park in that ball game. Oh Watch my out. goodness! Watch out, Michael Bourne. Just past Jeff Locke. Wow. This is close. Duck. Thank you. Yeah, you see it in real time. It's it's scary. I mean, it's really scary. Bourne has 40 stolen bases this season. Led baseball last year with 61. He is one behind Everett Cabrera or Struble Cabrera of the San Diego Padres. One and nothing. Everett Cabrera. Of the Padres. Two and zero. Oh. 
Bourne caught a dozen times. Used to see a good bit of him down with the Houston Astros. Three fifty on base percentage. One of the top leadoff men in the game. Was it Bourne and Bourgeois down there? Huh? Balls behind Prado. Three balls, no strikes. And you always wonder in this kind of scenario against a, a base stealer whether he's given a little extra concentration on the runner before turning back to the batter. Especially when it becomes a 3 0 count. Terry Pendleton over to talk with Bourne. Terry Pendleton, MVP, one of those early 90s years when everybody thought Barry Bonds was going to win another one, but. Terry Pendleton was the MVP. 1991. Three and one on Prado. Two aboard for Hayward. Third walk for Locke. Close but no cigar in this last delivery, which was ruled ball four. Take a look at the range resources strike zone grid. Looked pretty good with that replay. Jeff did not get the call, walks his third, and you just can't work around walks all night long. Ray Sears out maybe to impress that fact up upon Jeff Locke. Umpires there on your screen, Jeff Nelson, the crew chief, Bill Welke at first. Corey Blazer and Chris Guccione. Tough second half for Pirate pitchers. Tough second half for Ray Searage. Who, trust me, has worked as hard in the second half as he did in the first half when things were going so well. Mr. Locke is uh, working himself into the heart of the Atlanta Brave batting order. Hayward, Jones, Freeman. Playing with fire when you walk batters anytime, especially batters at the top of the batting order. Hayward takes ball one, bounced to third. His first at bat. He's bounced back this season. Had the sophomore slump last year, Hayward. Two on, two out. And we're talking about the good control of Lockton's first five starts, just six free passes. One of those games he had three. The other one were pretty clear in terms of clean in terms of control, but three free passes so far early in this game. Foul tip. They were a little surprised by that call. One and two. He doesn't think so. Well, let's see what we can see. Wow. I can understand why he didn't think so. It wasn't close, was it? <laughs> I, I'm not sure. I, I wonder you heard, sometimes you hear a little tick whether he hit the he didn't hit the catcher's glove with his bat for sure. Checked, did he? He didn't, according to the third base umpire on the appeal. Maybe we're even now. Michael McHenry asked again, but didn't realize that Jeff Nelson had already asked Chris Guccione. And I don't think he did either. Two and two. Two on, two out.
Stays two and two on Hayward. First round pick five years ago, 14th overall choice out of Ridgewood, New Jersey. Finished second to Buster Posey and Rookie of the Year balloting two years ago, and then had the slump last season at just 227. Take a look at this one also as it's tailing back a little bit off the strike uh, off the strike zone in toward the batter. A little movement in that direction. And we can start up the merry go round here. 3 2 2 outs as the clock continues to build up that pitch count. Hayward is seventh in strikeouts this season, seventh most in the league. Runners go and lined up the middle. The Braves will take the lead. Two hard line drives up the middle. Michael Bourne and now Hayward on the 3-2 pitch as Bourne scores 1-0 Atlanta. The more pitches you see, the more comfortable, the more familiar you get. Extended at bat once again from Jeff Locke and that ball is blistered right back through the middle. Clint Burmis, if the ball's not hit that hard, may have some kind of a chance, but not there. Just hit too hard. So Prado at third as Hayward drives in his 82nd run of the season, and Chipper Jones, who lined out to Pedro Alvarez last inning. See one of many cameras in back of Chipper in the crowd. There, he'll, he'll get ready again with that camera, right? There you see it. There's a lot of them. Count. Hard to believe on any appeals that Chipper might have gone around enough for a strike and a half swing that you're going to get the appeal. <laughs> strike on Chipper. Hitting 302 from this side of the plate this year, 276 from the other side. Hit it hard enough first time up to add to that right hand total and line with the line of it. Pedro Alvarez at third base. Playing in his 124th game against the Pirates, 298 lifetime. 17 home runs versus Pittsburgh, 86 RBIs. Fifteen homers here at PNC Park and twenty seven career games in this yard. Two balls, two strikes. And a full count. He has said that his body is telling him it's time to step away. But when you look at him, I mean, he still looks like he's in great shape. Freddie Freeman, four walks for Locke. This is what's been happening to Jeff. Uh, as you said, uh, some starts where he's done well early and then uh, this gets in these jams. And again, part of the education process getting out of jams, and he's worked himself into a thick one here. He's already given up one, and Raves are threatening to open it up. And the Pirates have their bullpen going as McHenry. Talks things over with Locke. Tries to settle him down. Last time out against the Mets, three and two thirds innings, five runs, nine hits, 
Only walked one in that game. He's walked four so far here tonight. It's Jeff Karstens for the Pirates. And so Jeff Locke at a crossroads now. He's uh, really needs to get an out, or his night will be short once again. Yeah, and this pitch will be number 60, and you can't average 20 pitches an inning and succeed at this level. Not many levels. Bounce right side. Sanchez will keep it himself. Braves get one. The RBI by Hayward. On to the bottom of the third. The third inning, Jason Hayward collecting RBI number 82 of the year. Top of the order, Marte struck out his first time up. Marte hitless his last six at bats with five strikeouts. Bouncing ball fair. Hugging the line into the corner. And past the left fielder Johnson. Marte will be held at third. And he would have scored because the ball goes past both cutoff men and Poor Nick Leva. With nobody out, you certainly didn't, understand it, but the fans yeah, didn't really had to don't do. feel that way. Well, Reed Johnson actually did a pretty darn good job recovering once he got past him. I thought there would be no chance once it skipped past Reed Johnson. Marte speed. No chance for Chipper. Now the race is on. Down in that mysterious corner, you see the ball emerge, and you got to hold him up right there. And Chase Darnell at the infield back, and that will bring home the run. And Darnell gets the RBI, and it's tied at one. A triple for Marte, the ground out for Darnell. Marte, excellent speed. Knows he's got two. Now he knows he's got at least. Well, wait a minute, he yep. slowed down a bit there. Yep, he sure did. Well, if he goes full tilt, he's got the. Yeah, he gets waved. He gets waved in. Yeah. And he's got the ball. In he's got the play in front of him. Yeah. 
Well, that was telling, wasn't it? I mean, I, I can see if the play is in back here, but he's looking down at the corner as he's coming into second base. That that whole scenario is in front of him. I'm going to guess that's one thing the Pirates are really going to work hard on with Marte this offseason and into spring training. That the base running. And he's not the only one. That's and, what, and, yeah. and it's not the no, only no, team. No doubt. It's, it's, but it's rampant but around the is going to be probably the starting left fielder out of spring training unless something unforeseen happens. And it's the one area of his game, Steve. He's got it all. The power, the arm, the speed. Can break, I mean, those that five tool. But the one thing we've seen is base running. Questionable. I'm not, I'm not talking about hustle, but just certainly questionable base running plays. And there's a strikeout of McCutcheon, who walked in the first. Marte gets the triple and scores on the ground out by Darno, tied at one. I, I think part of base running is keeping keeping your wits about you. Don't don't get careless. Don't get you're you're out there. I mean. Many times you will have uh, what's in front of you, what's going on in front of you uh, to make your decisions. Well, as you but say, the, but know what's in front of you, know the situations. Yeah, and and you can work on cutting corners. Uh, cutting corners is not good in a lot of parts of life, but cutting corners, running bases, make those make those distances shorter. You know, and the, the big turns will kill you. A lot, a lot of facets to the base running. It starts what by. Focus, keeping alert. Yeah, again, knowing situations. He, he, a couple times this year, he's gone from second to third on balls hit to the left side of the infield, those kind of things. Yeah, and that, that's the, basic. Yeah. And th there really is not much excuse for that. And you can work with them, but a lot of them you have to do yourself as a baseball yeah. player. And you see, you're at second base, you see the ground ball. I mean, you've been taught since you were eight years old to make the ball go through. And since you're eight. Luis Silverio works with the base runners and uh, outfielders. Pirates first base coach, Nick Leva, the third base coach of the Pirates. Works with infielders. Mahalo, a couple of strikeouts. He has six through three innings. The Pirates tie it on the triple by Marte and the Darno ground down. We're giving away a Pirates prize pack every game this series when you interact with us on Game Connect. All you have to do is log on to Game Connect at RootSports.com and chat through Game Talk or email. During the game, automatically entered to win a jersey, autographed Pirates baseball, and more. Visit RootSports.com for more details and official rules. And thanks for watching your bucks here on Root Sports. Again, Game Connect at RootSports.com. And chat through Game Talk or email us in the booth during the game to automatically be entered to win that jersey, autograph, Pirates baseball, and much more.
Reed Johnson walked in the second. Got uh, Jeff Hayback up there. Don't let the smoke get in your eyes. Manny's barbecue. That's right. One ball, two strikes. Maybe when you interact with us, uh, speaking of Jeff up there, that camera, let us know, you know our first foray into this new true center field camera what your thoughts are about that I, I think it's been great Steve you oh, like yeah. that oh yeah right Absolutely. down the middle yep. the camera's not on the shortstop side Real good it's, luck there yeah. downstairs swinging this well done I'm just swing over top of that low fastball Look there from the HEH camp. Way out front. Might not have been the fastball. Looked like that swing was way out in front. And there are directly behind the pitcher, so you've seen a bunch of different angles. Oh yeah, there's a circle change. See, see the circle, the first finger and the thumb. That's how you indicate that that change up, creating that swing out in front. Brian McCann at the plate on two. Fastball one and two. How was your change up Steve? We didn't have the circle change back what, then. What, what kind of well, change up? Okay we, we threw it. Uh, it was just off a fastball grip. And instead of just extending out you try to come under the ball. Strike three. So this is how you held your change okay, up. We'll now. do the clinic on the. Yeah. The fastball grip. And instead of just extending out, you try to release and, and kind of, as oh. I said, pull the window shade. So you Come essentially the kept the same grip. Oh, the same grip. Absolutely the same grip. Yep. Every once in a while, you turn it over off the two seam grip, but then you turn it over and just try the last minute to take some speed off. But the four seamer, you just try to come off under the ball and you get the sound effects too. Now, how would you rank your change up? Was it pretty good? It was, it was fair. It was my fourth pitch. Fastball curve slider change. But I I, I, I used a curveball as, as an off speed pitch too. I okay. use it as a change up. So I had two actually three p, uh, pitches or three curveballs with three different speeds. The uh, the get me over curveball the medium curveball and then ahead in the count just throw it as hard as you can to get the power curve. I needed all those. <laughs> Ball popped up. Well, quite a different uh, inning for Jeff Locke. After struggling in the third, comes right back for a one, two, three, fourth. Eleven pitches, one one.
Spinning number four. And Michael McHenry. Set to lead things off. Walked in the second. Pops up to the line and right. Hayward. AT&T trivia tonight. We go but way back to 1903, Steve. Wow. On this date. That's the first one, right? First, first World, World Series. Series game was played. Who were the starting pitchers? Well, uh, it was the Pirates and Tigers. I don't know who it was. For Pirates it. and Tigers. Wasn't it? Ty Cobb? Boston Americans, wasn't it? Boston Americans. Was that the first World Series? Cobb? Anyway. I, <laughs> anyway. Yeah, anyway. So anyway. Uh, so it, anyway. it was Bob Walk. Yeah. Oh, and you're, McClain, get, you're getting back at Bob. Because you know that's what Bob would have said. Let's ask Steve. Chipper Jones over by the railing, and it's out of play. The first World Series ever was played between the Pirates and the Boston Americans in 1903. Back then, it was the best of nine. Boston won that one five games to three, but the, the trivia question who were the starting pitchers game who, one? Who would possibly know that? Who would possibly, possibly know John that? John Wayner would know it. Yeah, right. Well, Cy Young was probably one. He had to start game one, right? I don't know. Well, what do you mean? How could he not? If you had Cy Young on your team, and you're in the World Series. Depends if it was his turn, his day in the rotation. Come on, you're setting your you're setting up uh, because I'm sure Cy Young had pitched like the day before, so it was his time to pitch game one anyway. Guys pitched back to back days. <laughs> All right, Cy Young and well, Deacon Philippe comes to mind because I think he must have pitched three or four games in that series. And you say Bob Walk might have pitched in game one also? I don't think Bob got the start. Oh, he hit groin pull. Oh, of a calf <laughs> or hamstring. I'm going to get shut out in the trivia question all year. It's going to. I had no chance at this one. Give me an easy one tomorrow night, guys. And that's a fair ball. Just a slowly hit ground ball, and Tabata into second base with a double. And <laughs> no, Jose. No, 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 no. You're going nowhere. Yeah, exactly. A lot of English just cues it down the first baseline. Freeman didn't move. I think he saw it. So now we're looking at a similar scenario that we saw yesterday. But this one ends better. Now, there's no way they're going to pitch to Barmas. Yesterday with nobody out he was thrown out at third. Of course the old adage you never get thrown out. At third base making the first or the third out of an inning. And they're going to walk Barmas intentionally those great numbers plus you've got the pitcher spot on deck. And this is a no brainer. You know that that is a rule. You don't want to you don't want to make the first out at third base, but there are certain situations, and I, I believe yesterday was one of them. That you had to get over to third base. I mean, it was there for you. Yeah, I agree with you, Steve. Well, I mean, you and I were on the radio side, and when that ball kicked off, and then with this, you know, Tabata, Dio Huntington talked about this earlier this year about attitude and needing to get back in shape. That wasn't the fastest trip from the first. It was play. not, and and I think he's got a, a ton of work to do over the off season to get back to where he was as a rookie. Uh, you know, the Pirates signed him to the long term deal, figuring he was going to be the, the starting right fielder for years to come. Going to, so yeah, make your point quickly because this. No, no, <laughs> he's going to he's, he's going to get a hit here. <laughs> Jeff Locke's going to get a hit. Okay, but. Uh, Top of the needed to, to be at third base regardless of all that. Oh, that was it. A lot of English on that yep. ball. It almost came back into fair territory.
He's trying, but it's uh, sometimes it's tough up there when you're a pitcher and got the bat in your hands. Sometimes it works. That works right doesn't. there. Strike three on lock. That's number seven for Mahalam. The Pirates leave a couple. Tied at one through four. Pirates Baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by Barrel Automotive. We're driven to be better. By PNC Bank, for the achiever in you. And by Chevy Cruze, which offers EPA estimated 42 MPG highway. Let's go box. There's barbecue right there, Steve. Pretty good, doesn't it? Fifth inning tied at one. Is that Manny's? I'm not sure. All right. Here's Paul sure Mahalo. About, I'm not uh, sure about the trivia question either. Manny's BQ, a bar barbecue. We got to work on that sign. The other yeah, one, don't we? Yeah, we really do. Is your flock trying to return the favor here? The river walk and Jeff Locke, who struck out looking, now strikes his mound opponent out swinging. Number five for Locke, second time he's gotten Mahalam. So the trivia question 1903 first World Series ever. The Boston Americans against the Pittsburgh Pirates, the starting pitchers in game one. Steve said Cy Young and Deacon Philippe. You're right. You were right. Come on, give yourself credit. No. You, you got it. You came up. We, with we, it. we both got it. I didn't get it. And I want an easy question tomorrow. Remember when we used to keep scores? Did you like that when, when we, we kept keep, score? Yeah, yeah. Did you seriously? Did you like it? Yeah, I'll we'll take it. a poll. We'll ask Wayner, Neverett, and Walk if they want to get back to that. Yeah, I think we should keep score next year. Next year? Mm -hmm. Yep. A lot of people didn't care for it. For instance, some people. viewers. Oh, viewers didn't. Oh, okay. But there's another opportunity to go to Game Connect. And let us know what you think. Now, yeah. Should we keep score next year? Problem is, I'll tell you what the real problem is. Some one of us cheated the last time we kept score. Who would that have been? Do you think? I don't think uh, one. I, I, guy I don't know cheated. of anybody, Bob, that uh, that uh, cheated. Really. Uh, I I had a chance to, but I walked away from uh -huh. that opportunity. We, we can't do it. The computer age just destroys any any fairness. It's, yeah, it's not as fun, especially when one guy has to cheat. He can't stand losing, so he cheats. That was awful. And uh, we got to get a bad away from, example too, I might say. Yeah, we got to get away from uh, <laughs> multi <laughs> answer. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, he's chilly. The 
There he is. He did not like to lose. That's why he put up the rules for the trivia question. He has to be right. Michael Bourne, a one out walk. Number five. Tim Nevers got, uh, he's really buttoned up. Those guys, yeah. I thought Bob said he liked autumn and fall weather. He's not acting like it. And Chicago is about 50 degrees, and he took off his sport coat and rolled up his, do you see that? Shirt sleeves? I did. Yeah, I did. They can take that uh, calendar down, too. I think they realize they should, anyway. Tomorrow night and Wednesday afternoon, you still need the pirate calendar up there? What the 2013 calendar, maybe? Prado has fly down and walked. Five walks for Jeff Locke. Well, he's uh, danced around those five free passes. You can do that when you've only given up a couple hits. You start combining the hits for those free, that number of free passes. You've got real issues. <laughs> Trying to work his way through the fifth inning. Get a base deal over there. Got to keep track of him. So far in the game, five strikeouts for Lock, seven for Paul. A dozen. These guys aren't known for racking up a lot of strikeouts. There goes the runner. Good throw. How about Michael McHenry getting that throw off? And it looked as though Darno made a quick pick out of the dirt. Oh, great release there by McHenry. Yep. And clean it up nice at second base, too, with making sure he got the ball in the glove and got the tag back down. Didn't have the glove go up too high. Good transfer. Nice play by Darno, huh? It's a great angle for it mm -hmm. too from that center field camera. Well done, both ends. CS 2 4. Well, Bourne doesn't make it all the time. He's been thrown out 13 times, not a goal of the 40 steals. What helps there too is the short hop, so it's not so far out in front of second base where the hop is going to go a little bit high. It was down there low enough where you really didn't have to do much with the glove. It was like getting pretty much a perfect throw by the time the little bounce and skip came to him. Dribbler and a foul ball. Up in his eye. Otto hit in the face. face the ball came back up and got him. He's holding his eye at first, but yeah, oh, right in the chin, teeth. And holding his nose. Uh -huh. Got a lot of them. He's going to stay in the ball game. Two and two. As you see, Prado is searching to see if there's any blood. Obviously, there was none. Two and two the count on Prado, who walked his last time, flied to right in the first. Up. Darno out. Look out. It's the right fielder, Tabata, to make the catch. Strikeout, a walk, a caught stealing, a pop up. Top of the order for the Pirates coming up.
Pirates season tickets from full season to half and 20 game plans. There's a plan that's just right for you. Enjoy great benefits all season long, like batting practice in the Pirates cages, Q&A with Pirates management, and more. To place your deposit, go to pirates.com 2013. Good night for the Pirate Jacket. Marte tripled his last time up, leading off the third, scored on the Darno ground out. Seven strikeouts for Mahalam. His career high is ten. Struck out 10 Phillies in 2008, August 8th that year in Philadelphia. He has struck out seven Pirates through four. That's hammered to center field. Deep. Marte hits one out of here to dead center. Starling Marte's fifth. Bucks lead it 2 1. There's one of those tools that package of tools you're talking about the power straight away center field and he just crushed it and you've got to do it to that part of this ballpark. Triple home run for Starling Marte. Showing off some of that talent. Indeed right out of the park. Line drive homer. A line drive there to left field and coming in to make the catch Reed Johnson. Worth another look for sure. Upstairs and he goes upstairs and gets it. Kind of a dangerous neighborhood unless you throw about 95, 97 miles an hour. Up at the top of the strike zone. Up above that. You're better off. Tough to get up that high. High fastball hitters. With Jeff Locke, hitters sorry, Steve. Jeff, Jeff Locke walking by there really liked seeing that because oh, yeah. he also sees the bullpen going, which means Locke probably finished. In order to get a W, he needed a run. Remember Kyle McPherson the other night uh, pitching so well, but not getting. That ball hit well to center field. Deepest part of the yard. And that'll be a double for McCutcheon. Look about three balls getting tattooed here in the bottom of the fifth inning. And it figured Mahalam out third time around. Get things going in the Atlanta bullpen. They're moving around. I don't know how serious they are about it, but they're moving. Gabby Sanchez at the plate. Double for McCutcheon. He's one for two. Sanchez 0 for two. 193 hits now for McCutcheon. I thought they were going to start warming up in the Atlanta bullpen, but it might be just that fifth inning stretching exercise where they get the guys. Moving around, stretching, loosening up a little bit after sitting, especially in this cold. He picks up the inside part of the plate. Still quiet. Well, like there's a lot of bodies in that pirate bullpen. I don't know if there's much more room on the bench to be had out there. Distance continues. That's usually an indication that we're going to see him pretty soon. It's 
Sanchez trying to bring McCutcheon home. McCutcheon has scored 107 runs, one more than Justin Upton of the Diamondbacks for the league lead. Out. We'll examine that. Barajas, Eric Fryer. One ball, two strikes on Gabby Sanchez with one out. Another foul ball. That one hurt. Mm. Right off the shin. Sanchez hitless in his last 15 at bats now. Jeff Locke anxiously a spectator now trying to earn his first big league win. This is eighth start this season but this is tenth major league start. It's a handful last year. But that first W. McPherson certainly pitched well enough to get a deal in that, but did not. Kyle McPherson. Bucks now with five hits. Three, uh, what, four of them extra base hits. Two doubles, a triple, and a homer. Now three and two. Seventy eight pitches thrown by Paul Mahalam. And there goes McCutcheon and it's lined right to Chipper Jones. Wouldn't you know it? Mm. They meet again as they did before the game in a ceremony. <laughs> Wow, that was room service double play. But the home run for Starling Marte, his fifth major league dinger, gives the Pirates a 2 1 lead. It was right out of the park.
American League East standings Baltimore and the Yankees tied atop the division. Texas uh, up two games on Oakland and Detroit about ready to wrap up the Central. Sterling Marte's home run gives the Pirates the lead. As Jason Hayward leads off against Locke. So Karstens was up throwing. Uh, I think he's got a short leash, but you send him back out here for the sixth. Only given up a couple hits. Walks have been a problem, but he's been able to dance around them. Well, the outing gets extended. Two and one. Hayward ripped a single to center field in the third. Bringing home the Braves run. Well for Jeff Locke there's nothing wrong with the speed. I mean he came into the game 28 innings 28 strikeouts. So you know he's you know he's got enough on the fastball. And tonight he has struck out five in his first five innings. So that category is is OK. The control obviously. An issue tonight. But uh, Jeff Carson's is ready to get in here. And, uh, we'll see how it plays out and how long Jeff Locke is able to stay out there. These kind of situations sometimes you just need to get out after out after out to stay in because sometimes a manager will say, I'm going to let you go out there until we get a base runner and then I'm going to have to make a move. Not that it's programmed that way tonight, but that has been a a program some managers have used. Oh, a long look into Michael McHenry. He didn't get a batter that's going to step out. No. Nope. Gets it started. Still three and two. On Jason Hayward as Jeff Locke approaches 90 pitches. You wonder in this kind of situation, now you got a switch hitter coming up. I was wondering if it's just going to face Hayward, but Chipper's on deck, hitting right handed. Pete goes on. Winless after 10 starts, Jeff Locke, the most to begin a career by a Pirates pitcher since Tommy Sisk. No, my, my old buddy. Took uh, your old buddy parts of three seasons to get that first big league win under his belt. Broken bat, perhaps, ground ball. That string had to start in 63 for Tom? 62, I 62. think. 62. Right? Oh, okay. Now, was he a roommate of yours? Well, in the minor leagues, yeah. We, yeah, we spent a lot of time together. 62? I, I think so. Okay, yeah. Got it. Uh, his career started in 62. His ma sure. His major league career? Yeah. Okay. He made uh, three starts in 62. He made 57 appearances in 63. Four of those were starts. We're talking about getting the first win as a starter. Well, hit toward Marte and left. Nice. Good for the out. Interesting story. I got to make my first major league pitcher when Tommy Sisk made a start against the Atlanta Braves and got knocked out in the first inning. I was staying at his house. No kidding. He got knocked out in the first. I came in, did okay, and we had to drive home after the manager told him he was being sent down to Columbus. CJ 10. He's lined to third and walked. Talked earlier about Chipper Jones getting a chance to meet Mickey Mantle, who, when the, growing up, was his hero. He wanted to be just like the Mick. One of the reasons uh, Mick stayed uh, his whole career with the Yankees. That's rare these days. Chipper Jones. His entire career with Atlanta. 
Only a few other players can boast that these days. Two outs. Todd Helton of the Rockies, Derek Jeter, and Mariano Rivera of the Yankees, the Phillies, Jimmy Rollins, Michael Young of the Texas Rangers, and Brian Roberts of the Orioles. Free agency. A lot to do with a lot of players moving around. Brandon Inge spent his entire career at the Tigers, but he was let go and picked up by the uh, A's this summer. And of course, Ichiro moving from Seattle to the Yankees in a trade. Two outs. Pretty impressive here that uh, Jeff Locke struggled through that third <laughs> inning, Steve, got out of it, yeah. getting Freeman to ground out with the bases loaded after he gave up the run. Two hard line drives up the middle. But then after that, has faced the minimum after that third inning. With the help of a, of a caught stealing, this one base runner, free pass. So he's found a little bit of a groove, and if he gets this out, this will be a nice, nice bit of work for him. Feel good outing. Lynn Hurdle giving Jeff Locke the opportunity to begin the inning, and now chance he's got the first two outs, a chance to end. This inning, 103 pitches thrown. Yep. And again, it's one of those situations if he, if he runs the table and gets us out, but uh, one base runner could change that. By the way, he went out to start the sixth. What a finish. Very impressive, Jeff Locke, six Ks. Retires the Braves in order in the sixth. Chipper Jones is making his final road trip through Major League Baseball, and after 20 years, well, he's seen a lot of ballparks in a lot of cities. So earlier I asked him, what does he think of Pittsburgh? I love Pittsburgh. I've always had a, a, a great time here. Uh, uh, Three River Stadium was one of those parks that I really saw the ball good in, not to mention the fact I'm a huge Steeler fan, always have been. So, you know, getting a chance to play where so many great Steelers played, where so many great Pirates played, same field, got me a little, little extra jacked up to come here to Pittsburgh and play a little extra jacked up Steve I'm sure you were a little jacked up back in the day playing in some of those ballparks absolutely yeah uh, yeah, yeah going to uh, going down to Atlanta absolutely played an all-star game down there line foul by McHenry I was kind of revved up going to Forbes Field 1964 pretty pretty neat. Well it's really neat too though I think and great stuff there from uh, Chipper Dan talked to him before the game uh, and of course he's had to answer this all year he does it gracefully and uh, professionally as he's been his entire career but uh, how, how great it is to, to really end a career I mean, on top of his game, he, as you say, he's in great shape. He could probably play two, three more years, but he has standards. Yep. Yep. 
So many just keep going. Including his hero, Mickey Mantle, yeah. played too long. Willie Mays played too mm -hmm. long. Both of them really embarrassed at the end of their career trying to play first base, which, you know, maybe back in the day they thought that was a, a more comfortable, easier on the body position, but there's a lot going on in first base. I remember that a couple years ago, nice. Chipper threatened, didn't he? Remember that? Threatened to, to call it quits. Yeah. And Bobby Cox said, I don't think so. I think he'll play, and I want to see him play from the stands. Mm hmm. I want to watch him play He's doing this as a fan. Yeah. Don Sutton, Jim Powell on the radio broadcast. Hall of Famer, Don Sutton. You can certainly appreciate him. You know, Sutton was around 24 years as a major leaguer. You can appreciate the longevity of Chipper Jones and what he's meant to the Atlanta Braves. Came up as a shortstop. And Suffered an injury after appearing in eight big league games in 1993. He missed the entire 94 season. Shallow center, born, retire McHenry. One away. For the game, the Pirates honored Chipper Jones. They had uh, Andrew McCutcheon out. They handed him a commemorative base. $5,000 check to cystic fibrosis, one of his favorite charities. Pretty neat that his mom and dad are here as well. Watch uh, Chipper play his final regular season games, and they'll host the wild card game and on to the playoffs. Mom and dad. I'll be awfully proud. Larry Jones Jr. at third base. There's a ground ball and picked by Freeman. Tires Alvarez. Mahalam gave up three hard hit balls in the fifth, including the Marte home run. I'll tell you, Greg, it might be a pretty good contest. Who can work the gum over better, Chipper Jones or Clint Hurdle? Go at it pretty yeah, they good. Do. Tabata snuck a double inside the first base bag his first uh, last time up. You never did that, did you? You didn't chew gum. Oh, yeah. I, did you? I was gum chew. I tried tobacco once and uh, during batting practice and saw about six hitters. Got so oh. dizzy. And that was the end of that program. And Tabata again. This time, ball that kind of jammed him. Softly hit foul, pass first. Guys used to wrap bubble gum around a chew of tobacco. Some guys still do that. Yeah. You know that. I know a couple guys still do that. Yeah. yeah. More now it's sunflower seeds. So I found the chewing tobacco made my hair fall out. So I, I did stop. First time I met Paul Mahalam, it was some ceremony up in the up in the, one of the uh, luxury boxes. He was in the minor leagues. He had, he was recovering from being hit in the face. With that line drive as a, as a minor league, they brought him into Pittsburgh to do the repair work. Play made by the shortstop. Excellent. Great work there by Simmons. One, two, three. Pirates retired. Lead two to one.
Tomorrow, Pup Night, presented by Dad's Pet Care. Enjoy a night of baseball and festivities with your pup on the Pirates' deck while washing the Bucks. Take on the Braves at 7.05. Purchase a Pup Night game ticket for only $25. A portion of the proceeds benefit local animal shelters. For tickets, go to pirates.com slash pups. Cool, clear night in the Berg. And Jeff Locke departs with a chance to win that first major league game, first major league win. Jeff Carson's will come out and try to help preserve it. It's a 2 1 Pirate lead as you look at the numbers for Jeff Carson's. Are you looking at them? We'll let you know that Jeff Locke got it done. Six innings, one run on just two hits, five walks, six strikeouts. A little shaky in the second and third, but after that, Really, really good work by the young pirate left hander. Got it figured out later on. Good work. Jeff Karsten's ball one on Reed Johnson. Always been a little wary of green ice cream. She's not. Nope. No, not that stuff. Give me that green ice cream. <laughs> Slow breaking ball, one and two. You will see that delivery again for sure. But who knows what we'll see of Karsten's. We talked again on his radio show yesterday to Neil Huntington about Karsten's future, arbitration eligible, and a frustrating season in and out of the rotation with the injuries. A slow breaking ball again, and as Neil Huntington said, it's just you know, he's he's doing all he can to get the best out of his abilities, but uh, at times it's just his body lets him down. It's been various injuries, the shoulder problem, time with the hip. Yeah, you got to st stay on the field. Pirates uh, most consistent overall starter last year. Jeff Carstens. Made 26 starts at 338 ERA. So many times you've gotten the idea the Pirates don't know what to do with Jeff. You know, between some injuries and bullpen work and starting and. Very simple, complicated motion for Jeff. Carsten's listed as 6'3", 185 pounds. And he strikes out Reed Johnson. Now that's the curve, the same curveball, but a different speed. The slow curveball around 67, 68. This one's 76. So he's got two curveballs throwing in at different speeds. So spin coming in. Now this is an interesting matchup here. Brian McCann only has eight career at bats against Karstens but he's six for eight against him with a home run. I think we got the percentages working with him this time. Though. Strike one. And the backdoor breaking ball starting it outside and letting it curve in. You know, some some beers look good on people and some don't. Now, it looks OK on McCann. Yeah. I mean, it seems to fit OK. Other guys, I'm nah, not so sure. Two and one on McCann. Oh. <laughs> Slows it down to 68. Oh, dead fish. I mean, you just have to be out in front of that. It's so slow. Oh, off of Karstens, and the slow footed McCann is going to be thrown out. Wow. That took a long time for Brian to get the first base. Probably, he Steve. Might, he might be the only player yeah. in the National League. And you're talking brought. pitchers, too. He might be the slowest player in baseball. Brian McCann. That went 1 4 3. It could have gone 1 4 6 5 7 3. One six three. Sorry about that with the switch. Shift. 
Another look at Barmas coming in. Yeah, they had the shift on three infielders on the right side. Was it the AGH cam play by play on live or was it? It seems slow to slow the can down. <laughs> Simmons at the plate, ball one. Pop them up. Ball foul out to first baseman Gabby Sanchez. One, two, three for Jeff Karstens. Tonight's seventh inning stretch is presented to you by the new face of Northwood Realty Services. The Pirates lead two to one. We move along to the bottom of the seventh. Enjoy a seventh inning stretch here at PNC Park. Watching at home on Root Sports as we sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Shots from the AGH cam. Paul Mahalam delivers to Clint Barmas. A walk. Last time, intentional. Singled in the second. Mahalam has allowed five hits. Four have gone for extra bases, and Barmas didn't want to, but does. More good work for Barmas against Mahalam tonight. Josh Harrison out on deck to hit for Karstens. Pop up. One down. An easy play for Simmons. And Jeff goes a one, two, three, seven. The strikeout. There's a fan for you right there, Steve. And it's helping keep him warm, too. Yeah. And that too. You've got one of those hats. I do have one of those hats. Mine's fluorescent. I can wear it all year round, yep. anywhere. And you have. Mm -hmm. Doesn't look as good downtown, but boy, out in the wild. Out in the wild, but Upper St. Clair. No, wilder than that. Because you you've, you've worn it everywhere. Yes, I have. <laughs> Little scouting report for Harrison. The usual drill now. Kind of ways to keep warm. Now uh, that one's best dressed. Mm -hmm. There's no question about it right there. That's uh, not good. Uh, I've not seen that look before. <laughs> well, that looks, Steve. I like it.
Harston's had his hair like that for a while. Yes, Remember that earlier? Yes, this he summer? did. Upstairs with a fastball again. Paul Mahomes still out there working the bottom of the seventh. He's due up first next inning. Yeah, be it. Jeff, quick work in the seventh. Now three and one on Harrison. Started at second base yesterday, was uh, 0 for 3, scored a run. Two runs might be enough, but wouldn't be bad to add a couple. Hit right at Simmons. McDonald's High School football continues Thursday. Franklin Regional heads to Knock, looking to avenge last season's playoff loss against the Knights. Be here for the live kickoff at 7 and tune in Thursday nights this fall for another season of McDonald's High School football and root sports. How about before the game earlier this afternoon, A.J. Burnett, Jordy Mercer, Rod Barajas playing some football on left field. Mercer to Barajas. Uh, Ryan Morris was out there also. A.J. Burnett was calling the plays and allowed Mercer a few throws. Who was it? Tom House was a pitching yep. coach who used to work with yep. footballs. The Texas Rangers. I never understood that. Still really don't understand it. Tom House apparently did all kinds of studies. And it was his belief that the a great way for pitchers to uh, loosen up their arms. I thought the uh, the discus might be the, that the would be to, really good. Yeah. What did you use? A baseball. I, I did. Yeah, I used the baseball. And then I, well, we also had the steel baseballs. If you want to just kind of hang, you know, just hang your arm over the edge, and and uh, if this thing's made of steel, you just hung it hung it down there and just uh, <laughs> stretched out your arm. I can't do it because I'd be on the floor with the baseball. <laughs> but uh, there you go. But. You hang on to a, a, a lead baseball and then you pick up a baseball feels like a feather. So a lot of it's psychological, but uh, hey, psychological stuff was very attractive for me. Having gone to psychotic state. Marte has struck out tripled and homered 2 2 count on him. If he gets a double here, maybe a shot to bat again. Oh, not going to happen. No, Good timing no. on my part, wasn't it? Yep, you're hey, you on any, it. You're you on it. You got any stories for us, maybe? Yeah, let me show this change up. Yeah, wait, wait. No, I want to go back to that one story you had. Remember last inning? Uh, let's remember.
Sports Baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by Jeep. Now get a great deal on a legendary Jeep vehicle at the Jeep Summer Clearance Event by AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. And by Levin Furniture and the all-new Levin Mattress Stores. For a great deal on a new bed, shop Levin's. Let's go Bucks. 2-1, Pirates on to the eighth inning. 1-2-3-7 for Karstens. Jeff Locke in line to get the win. Pirates need six outs. Turn it over to Tony Watson. Watson, a 1-2-3-7th inning yesterday. Would this be Jeff Baker? It would be Jeff Baker. Baker was acquired from the Detroit Tigers. At the end of August. Started the year with the Cubs, dealt the Detroit August the 5th. Now on to Atlanta. Former Colorado Rocky. Out of Clemson University. Tony Watson with 52 strikeouts and 52 innings. Oh, so Mahalam on the hook, seven innings, a couple of runs on five hits, walked three and struck out eight. Johnny Venters, the lefty, Peter Moylan from the right side, and from down under. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Craig Kimbrell, their closer, has been. Incredible. 61 innings, 113 Absolutely strikeouts. Nuts. I mean, he's he's gonna get some Cy Young votes. Yep. That's almost two an inning. Kimbrough's work 61 innings, 26 hits given up. <laughs> Incredible. Since May the 4th, Steve, 51 appearances for Kimbrough. 053 ERA, 33 saves, six walks in 51 innings with 94 strikeouts. Lyle Overbay. How about that. Overbay. Picked up by the Braves. And popped up. Shallow left, shortstop, former teammate Clint Barmas. Teammate of Bakers. Host your next special event here at PNC Park. Perfect for corporate events, weddings, bar mitzvahs, and more. Heatering options available in the Pittsburgh Baseball Club. The Lexus Club or the Hall of Fame Club here at PNC Park. Call 1 800 buy bucks or go to pirates.com slash PNC Park events. Where the club level, Gunners Lounge, named after the Hall of Fame broadcaster Bob Prince. There's Keystone Corner. Makes a lot of sense. Second base, Keystone State. That works. Club 3000. Tribute to the 3000 hit club. Want to know on Michael Bourne. The ball on a strike. We'll have a little uh, post game event with everybody in the Hall of Fame club. 
will. Indeed. After the game, and uh, Steve, uh, it'll be my last opportunity to work with you, radio or TV, because you'll be, you and Tim will do the TV tomorrow night and radio on Wednesday together. This is it, isn't it? This is it. So, we're all done. Yeah. Again. I might see you again, by the way, before the, you know, next season. Oh, okay. Once or twice. We'll, well get I hope together. we cross paths. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Schedule a couple meetings if we could. Yeah, I've enjoyed it. Yeah. It's been, uh, despite the second half, it's always an absolute joy to really to work with one of my heroes. It's, it is incredible. I mean that. I'm not, I do, and you know I mean it. Well, thank you. I enjoy working with you. It's, it's uh, been a lot of fun for a lot of years yeah. now. It's getting down the road. Yeah. Of course, we'll celebrate your uh, birthday coming up in the off season. We'll uh, do it in the usual fashion. What is the usual fashion, by the way? You can't I say, can't, huh? I can't remember, but I, I know it's been good. Yeah, it has been. That's as sappy as we get. Yeah. Well, not really. We were pretty sappy at different times. Well, yeah. the Strike out of Michael Bourne. Two away. I'll think of some things to say for the next thing to you. So we'll, we'll get even. <laughs> I, mean, I got you I, first. I'm, I'm going to write down no, some things. I got sure. you yeah, first. I know, I know. I know the drill. <laughs> Prado has flight out twice to right and walked. Oh, there's one. I'll write it down here. We will address the subject and then drop it. How does that work? Thank you for your patience and uh, the help during the course of the year. And done deal. And there you have it. Yeah. Thank you. Two and zero on Prado. With Hayward on deck. We do have a. A wonderful ceremonial letter we read oh, to the, yes, the, we do. the crew after, yeah. after the game tonight. It's a really kind of a heartwarming note we got from a, an anonymous fan. If we didn't tear up just now, we will when mm -hmm. you read that letter. We've kept it over the years. It's about five years old. It's kind did, of ceremonial. Did, did that guy put his name down, by the way? No, he didn't. Oh, God. He didn't. Yeah, because we'd like to thank him for that because it is the gift that keeps on giving. Mm -hmm. Guys seem to enjoy yeah. it. Uh, no, he didn't. He didn't enjoy any one of us, but it's fun to. No, I mean, the guy is uh, seemed oh, to yes. enjoy hearing. The, the guy that wrote the letter oh, didn't, the guy, didn't like anything about any of us. Uh, didn't care for any of us, really. And uh, it was he somewhat graphic. Oh, yeah. Somewhat graphic about it. Very colorful language, this gentleman. Mm -hmm. Not a big fan. So it's a, a reading. It is a reading. Yeah. Fan club bag. We'll have some soft music in the background as you read it. Walk with two outs to Prado. It'll bring up Hayward. Dangerous, always dangerous business in a one-run game. And again, uh, looking down the barrel, Hayward, Jones, Freeman, all dangerous. Hurdle getting on the bullpen phone. Nobody up yet, but that will change as you Cletus Rojas. Bullpen coach answers that phone. It's going to be Brian Morris. Prado with 17 steals and 21 attempts. A win tonight will eliminate the Braves from the National League East title. The Phillies are helping Atlanta, leading two to nothing in D.C. in the eighth. Freddie Gonzalez. This club won 89 games last year. They had that big lead. 
They led the National League wild card by eight and a half games on September the 5th. Last year part of that incredible finish of a baseball season. We'll never see anything like that again. Oh and two. I wonder if we'll see another pitch like that again. Probably so. Hayward fooled badly. Yeah, he's not going to fool around coming inside to him with his kind of power. 27 home runs. So you like like to uh, likely to see in that neighborhood again. We'll confirm that with where Michael McHenry sets up. Yep. <laughs> Give it a try. See if he'll chase. They don't chase a lot. These Braves. They have uh, drawn the most. Free passes in the league. Adding to those league high totals uh, five versus Jeff Locke and Prado walked against Watson here. To center field and McCutcheon. That'll do it. Tony Watson a scoreless eighth. Andrew McCutcheon will be due up second in the bottom half of the eighth inning. On road ahead for the Pirates, down to two games after this one. Kevin Correa makes his last start tomorrow night against Tommy Hansen, and then a battle of 16 game winners veterans AJ Burnett and Tim Hudson on Wednesday afternoon. Yeah, a lot of W's in that portion. Here's the man from almost down under, I guess, uh, the Australian native, Peter Moylan. See his numbers. A lot of time in the minor leagues this year. Had a lot of injuries late last season. So uh, this year, kind of working uh, all the way up through the ladder, spending time at a lot of different levels, and trying to get healthy. Called up September. Torn labrum, rotator cuff last season. Put him on the DL the end of September. No and one on Darno, who is 0 for 3 in his first start of the season for the Pirates, called up in September. And Darno bounces this ball foul. Darno as well started the year on the disabled list. Well, it was the second game for AAA Indy when he was hit on the helmet with a pitch against the Toledo Mud Hens April the 7th. On the disabled list with a concussion and wasn't activated until May the 8th. At 252 with six home runs for Indianapolis. 
Fourth round pick of the Pirates in 2008. McCutcheon on deck. 0 2 count on Darno. Looks like Jared Hughes is getting ready to loosen up. That is interesting. Hmm. How about that? Joel Hanrahan back-to-back uh, -back appearances, so it's been pretty much uh, a role that I don't think he's wavered from much. I'm talking about Hurdle, the guy has pitched in consecutive games. He tries to stay away from them. Yep. Hanrahan threw a fair amount of pitches in both of his appearances. Wasn't it very tidy uh, appearance by Hughes yesterday? He really uh, uh, Hughes two days ago. Two days no. ago. Yeah. Hughes was not in the game yesterday. Mm -hmm. Really also pitching back to back games. So Hurdle staying away from him. One ball, one strike on McCutcheon. Doubled his last time up. Weekly hit to first. And out number two. Jason really directing traffic out there. Uh, Ray Sear just calling. He get me Rojas, Euclidus. This is a person to person call. You, it's for you. Searage. Gabby Sanchez. He is 0 for 3. And a fly ball to right. Catch made. Let's we'll see if Jared Hughes can pick up his second big league save. 2 1. Box. Baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by Subway Restaurants. Open at 7 a.m. for breakfast, lunch, or whatever you need to fuel your day. 
Subway, where winners eat. Let's go Bucks. Has two thumbs and loves Chipper. And Chipper Jones will lead off against Jared Hughes. Mercer at second base. Jared Hughes has one save and for number two. Does not have much wiggle room. Pirates lead it two to one. Still just two hits for the Braves tonight. Jared Hughes' first big league save came in St. Louis back on June 30th at Bush Stadium. The Pirates had a 6 3 lead in the eighth inning with two outs. Cardinals had a man on. Carlos Beltran had just doubled in a run. Then Hurdle called on Hughes to get Alan Craig, who was quickly retired. And then Hughes a 1 2 3 ninth to earn the save for Jeff Karstens. That was the first win of the year for Karstens and the first big league save for. The rookie Jared Hughes now facing future Hall of Famer Chipper Jones. Here's the heavy sinker to start off the ninth inning. What you do like in this situation, Hughes, most of the time keeping the ball down. You keep the ball down, you keep the ball in the ballpark. One down. Hughes gets Jones to bounce to Barmas. Laws for Chipper Jones. Oh, for three with a walk tonight. Freddie Freeman, dribbler. Alvarez a bobble throws past Gabby Sanchez. Air third base. They'll go over and tag the runner just in case he made any false move. He's okay. Alvarez's 27th error of the season. Double clutched and then it was a hurry job. A lot of spin on this ball. Right there. Yep, you see the double clutch and then uh, the sense of urgency kicks in. I was thinking there might have been a turn towards second. It made the appeal you can see the problems for Pedro. Jose Constanza will pinch run and the pinch hitter is Lyle Overbay. Let go by the Diamondbacks. Overbay was with the Pirates last year, hit 227 with eight homers, 37 RBIs in 103 games. He was let go, picked up by Arizona. A decent couple of months with the Diamondbacks, but struggled this year. Overbay is one for 16 with Atlanta. Has struck out eight times in those 16 at bats. Total of 112 at bats this season with 34 strikeouts. Double play candidate. Good speed at first base. Well aware of that. Yesterday the Pirates lost for the first time this season when leading after eight innings. 69 and one. Blown saved by Hanrahan. Liner to left Marte. Two yeah, outs. The ball sinking fast. Yeah.
Brian McCann now. As Jared Hughes tries to save it for Jeff Locke. Locke looking for his first big league win. This would be the second major league save for Hughes. Want to talk. McCann tonight bounced into a double play in the second against Locke, struck out looking in the fourth against the Pirates starter, then against Karstens, lined the ball off of Karstens' glove, rolled toward the shortstop Barmas, and he was retired. Two outs, nobody on. Washington Nationals are an out away from winning the National League East. That's a brave out away as the Pirates try and win game one of the final three game series of the year. Phillies leading the Nationals late in their ball game. One and two now on Brian McCann. Loyal Bucko fans. Yep, coming out on a cool evening with not a good forecast. You know, September's 15,009. Two and two. There's one nervous man in the pirate dugout or back in the clubhouse. I'm not sure where he is, but Jeff Law is hoping for an out here. <laughs> he might be cussing at Michael McHenry now, or he might be applauding him. Go out and make sure you get it right, or come on, come on, let's get this done so I can have my first major league win. Uh, everything that's transpired and everything that's been going on around this ball club and it's been so difficult in September. Now Ray Sear is going to come out and talk. But for Jeff Locke, this could be a night he'll never forget. Trying to get the final out and uh, one more out from the Pirates 78th win and maybe no consolation to Pirate fans, but it would be the most wins for a Pirates team since 1999. And who knows you win this one you win a couple more you get to that 80 mark you now you're you're looking for. Small victories right now. That's <laughs> just going to say. Yeah, hey. Yeah. Anything. Any. Look, your goals yep. change. Yep. Up and down. Finish him off, Jared. See that good sinker. Taking forever. They're having trouble getting to this next pitch. There yeah, they are. Back to Hughes. Where's the Jolly Roger? A W. First big league win for Jeff Locke. Starling Marte's home run. One of the big hits for the Pirates and the one that gave the Bucks the lead as they tied it in the bottom of the third inning. Marte had tripled to start that frame. Not much offense, but certainly great pitching tonight. Yep. They held on to this one, two to one. 
a win is a win is a win and uh, a lot of wins will feel a little bit the same but this one will never feel the same as it does or any subsequent ones will never feel as good as this one does to Jeff Locke. Jared Hughes second big league save as the Pirates win game one of the three game series and 78 wins yeah the most since they won 78 in 1999 and now let's send it to Robin T. Greg and Steve, thanks very much. So we see a little history tonight as Jared Hughes' second save presents.